I am going to read some poems from volume 12 of Anarchy, Humor, and Hate, which was written when I was in high school. Sorrow, deep depression, the crutch which inhibits me from running my life, sadness, insanity, the beat of a maniac drummer to my happy ears, the apprehension about the visit of a burdensome guest to a quiet, tranquil home, all the unnecessary trouble which ceases the combustion of my filament of mirth, the constant perpetual aggravation derived from a pestering sibling, the plague which decimates, a state of perfect wellness, a bitter teaspoon of some repulsive staple, a boring lecture delivered to an inattentive, uninterested classroom, unjustifiable cynicism, generated only to disrupt a loving, peaceful world, compliments devoid of genuine heartfelt emotion, supplied superficially to obtain a tangible reward, Lucifer's vile intervention, upsetting an otherwise sinless world, a shocking tremble vibrating, a motionless, dormant object, the ruthless, bloody penetration of a sharp bullet into the skull of a pacifist, a blasphemous, artistic presentation viewed through the eyes of a God-loving, born-again Christian, a battered and defeated homeless man, once again denied shelter and nutrition. A lonely child shunned by his peers. The reputation of a respectable, honorable person tarnished by manipulative tabloid. The deepest, most sincere, heartfelt, loving crush on the girl of your dreams. Unreturned and unfulfilled. A societal black sheep continuously ostracized and persecuted the rape of a virgin, the untimely death of a humanitarian, the penetration of salt into the raw exposed wounds of an abused slave, the rejection of a manuscript toiled on forever me, the cessation of existence. There will come a time for this existence to cease when I shed my last redeeming tear, when I generate my last healthy thought, when I cease benefiting the planet and commence hindering its growth, would I employ in my heart that one last time? When I no longer feel emotions, when my days are burdened with sorrow and void of joy, when I would rather purge than nourish myself, when I would prefer to mourn than celebrate, when my cheeks become so stiff, tired, and overworked from frowning that I ache and revel in agony, when my brain is endlessly employed and my soul is permanently retired, when life is no longer worth living, this existence must cease. When death is so much more appealing than life, when my most vicious antagonist is myself, when fear and apprehension undermine my ambition and integrity, when I only see darkness at the end of the tunnel, when goals become meaningless drudgery, when living is an overwhelming weight upon my shoulders when pondering the future becomes tremendously strenuous when sulking becomes my mo when i intimidate myself with mental sickness plagues me day and night when life becomes a tragedy this existence must cease when i ultimately determine happiness and fulfillment is unachievable When the final option becomes the solution to all the problems, when there is no turning back, is when this existence must cease. Anti-corporate man. His life has quite a noble purpose. He's a role model for you and me. Are we hearing his plea? He's so dedicated to resisting that corporate vulgarity. We should applaud him. He isn't glued to the tube. He shops at grocery stores. He never goes to shows. His anger and dissatisfaction constantly grows. He's living. He voices his displeasure towards our crass materialism, but we do not heed. His main motif is disassembling this oppressive hierarchy. He sacrifices. He denies himself luxuries. He's no average show. All of these resisting the evil temptation. He's so ultimately fulfilled. 
He pierces through the smoke screen, uncovering what you and I cannot see. He would rather be a happy derelict than a wealthy, nervous wreck. His time is not wasted, it is invested. His retaliation and reaction to corporate oppression is the perpetual middle finger. He incites rebellion, he excites and inspires lovers of freedom. He is a precedent which we all should follow. He gave up the corporate world long ago. Take a look at him. Where does he acquire all the energy and determination which makes him go? He lives a life lacking greed, corruption, and evil. Look at the glow of his eyes. Look at what... Look at how doing what's right makes him feel good inside. Don't doubt his effectiveness. He may be limited in support and sheer number, but his devotion is without limit. He is an army of one. He is not apprehensive to express his discontent. He is perfectly satisfied shunning their wicked ways. He does not require their services to him. Nothing is missing. He derives no pleasure from their existence. He demonstrates his individuality, refusing to abide by their code of ethics. He reinforces his theories with sound practice. He sneers and scoffs at the easy life. He is constantly vying for something more. He shuns superficiality. His philosophy of life is well defined. It tends to invoke purity in the heart. Prophets don't arouse him. He derives excitement from doing good. When our evil world topples, he will be exalted as a hero, we can only try to embody his likeness. He is so much more mighty than our corporate kin. Those corporate morons attempt to invoke our pity upon him with their vivid demagoguery. But the only correct view directed towards him is one of admiration. We should all marvel at his nobility. He's a martyr for a better life. He has toiled to allow him to reap his rewards. He shows us the way. He's a saint. He's not enslaved. He is not a victim. He's a master. He's happy, are we? Confusion with the world. Does anyone feel what I feel? Can I relate to anyone? Am I one? Do I share the common purpose? Are my cries of agony incoherent to the ears of the masses? Is my mind a universe, the population of one? Am I a citizen of my own nation, which is seceded by society? Seated from society, a soul which cannot be confronted because it is not comforted, a soul which cannot be comforted because it is not understood. Does my voice even escape the boundaries of my cranium and penetrate to the comprehension of my fellow men? Are my thoughts nothing more than nerve impulses, unable to embody a 3D rendition which would be intelligible to any and all concerned? Are they apathetic? Are my cries just murky? Do they imprison themselves in a narrow mindset? How am I supposed to reach out to others when I can't even justify myself? Are the echoes relayed? Is the message destroyed during its delivery? Do I need a translator? Do I need a middleman between myself and the world? Is it the outside world? Only delusions spontaneously improvised in the midst of my mind? Am I in the middle of a dream which I never seem to wake? Are my perceptions paranoid or just far-fetched? Is a rhetorical dialect generated in my skull a foreign language to man at large? Am I terminally inflicted with so much narrow tunnel vision? Do I reside upon the frayed fringe and peer inside? Am I the only one who seeks to answer my questions? Do they prematurely consider me a listing on the obituary page? Does increasing my level of eloquence heighten my ability to communicate, or does it muddle my expression? Does pondering rhetorical questions, which have no feasible apparent answer, bog me down? Or is it beneficial to my growth as an intellectual being? A rabbit. A rabbit is there. He is cited by me. The rabbit is here.